Let's take a look at our market measure today. A little bit heavy, so get your helmet on. Expected move multiples in different implied volatility ranks. Uh, sponsored by the CBOE, and Lord have mercy on our soul for this one. This is gonna, this is no, it's not. This, has, this has you written all over it. This is going to be good. The um, a lot of times you'll see an expected move of let's say ten dollars, uh -huh. and we'll set our strikes at the expected move. But do you have a better chance of that expected move being right? And, and limiting you or 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 not depending on you know like ivrs like do you think if ivr is really high like let's say it's like 80 mm -hmm. do you think that expected move is going to be pretty good or not so good and if you have an expected move of what do you like, mean what do you, it's quantified pretty good what pretty mean good means it'll stay inside that expected move if it's higher i expect it to stay inside the expected move or at least yeah okay i'll say that yeah i, I get to go wider with my, because the volatility is higher, uh, collect the same amount of credit as if volatility was was less. Yeah, I'm gonna hopefully go with higher. Um, let's take let's take. Sa a Sa Sa is there any truth before we start this um, that you are taking off on Monday and Tuesday and going and going to Puerto Rico so you could wear those bright colored uh, t-shirts you bought? There is a little bit of truth to that. <laughs> a little bit of truth to that. Will we see a picture of you with Mufungo and a lime shirt on? Well, I wasn't planning on bringing the lime shirt um, to the Mufungo dinner, but <laughs> now that you just mentioned it, yeah. <laughs> Be a team player and tweet out a picture of that, will you? <laughs> Send it to me. I'll take care of it for you. I'm sure you will. <laughs> um, all right. Let's do it. We're As ready. premium sellers, we often rely on implied volatility, implied volatility derived expected move to decide where to place our strikes. In fact, last night I was doing a webinar with a group outside of New York City and somebody asked the question, hey, how do you know where to pick your strikes? And my response was, well, we just base everything on expected move. You know, you could be one time expected move, one and a half times expected move, two times expected move. But the beauty of expected move, which is right about 70 percent of the time, is mm -hmm. it really does help you find the place to set up the strikes. So the normal distribution tells us how often to expect strikes at multiples of expected move to be broken. But the market is rarely normal. So how should our interpretation of expected move change in different volatility environments? Next slide, please, John. So we did a study. We looked at seven years of price and volatility data in the SPY, IWM, Apple, and Tesla. We used 30-day implied volatilities to calculate the Black-Scholes expected moves. We observed the frequencies with which the realized 30-day moves exceeded the expected move. Two times the expected move and three times the expected move. One time, two times, and three times. Okay. Um, we looked at it overall and then in different implied volatility environments. We looked at implied volatility, I think, less than 30, uh, from 30 to 60, and over 60. Those are three environments. For theoretical normal distributions, these should be very close to. Now, these are just theoretical normal distributions. Sure. So if it was one time the expected move, 32% of the time. I mean, it should go outside of it. If it was two times, it should go out 4.6, over, you know, 4.6, mm -hmm. or stay under. In this case, we're looking for it to stay under 4.6. Sure. And if it was three times expected move, which is three standard deviations, under 0.3. And so this is regardless of IVR if we were just looking at a straight theoretical model. But in reality, does it look different in reality than it looks in a straight theoretical model? That's the real reason for doing this. I mean, mm -hmm. only Tasty would dig down into the, um, would really dig down into the depths of that question because this is such a, you know, this is so interesting to us, but basically asking the question of, hey, should I have a higher expectation for staying inside the expected move with volatilities low, medium, or high? Let's go to the next slide. It's pretty good, actually. Yeah. So the first one we're going to look at is SPY. And this is the only one we're going to spend a lot of time on. You can go through the other ones yourself because you can see, you know, if, if you like trading something differently. But if you look here, um, the one time the expected move frequency. So how often do we go outside of that one of that expected move? Now, remember, 
The statistical chance says 32. But the overall rate, looking at this for um, however many years this was, 16 years or something, mm -hmm. is 20%. So if you look at it two times, I'm sorry, if you look at IVR less than 30, it's 19%. So it's the same as the overall rate, basically. Sure. If you look at IVR between 30 and 60, it's more towards the theoretical norm, but it's almost 50% higher than the overall rate. And then when you look at IVR over 60, it's going to be lower across the board for all those. So what we're saying here is when IVR is super high, the chances of having an outlier move are is super low. When IVR that, is, that's the game. That's the game we play, right? That's yeah, our, yeah. No, this is the edge, game. Regardless the of what these numbers are, this is the game we play. But the IVR super high, chance of an outlier move is super low. The IVR super low, and the chances of an outlier move are much lower than theoretical. But the IVR trading between 30 and 60, where we think that's kind of that optimal range, also has the most amount of risk. Now, to get the biggest return, you have to take the most amount of risk. And listen, this is what we always go to, like, you know, when somebody says, how much can I make on a portfolio? Well, how much risk do you want to take? I mean, and then you factor in the IVR of a strategy and you try to kind of put yourself in the in a winning position on entry because the only thing you can control. There's a couple of interesting things here. The first thing that jumps out to me is that three times the expected move, the overall rate, if you remember, is three tenths of a percent. So, you know, how people say like outlier moves happen in trading more often than you would think they do. Mm -hmm. Well, the mm -hmm. answer is they do. They happen three times more often because right. look at the 0.9 is three times 0.3. So the first thing that jumps out here is that the overall rate expected move. Three times the expected move, you're going to get a much higher rate than theoretical. But one times the expected move, you're going to get much lower rate than theoretical by over 50%. And two times the expected move, you're going to get much lower rate than theoretical. So the, the most important thing on this whole takeaway is understanding that the expected move in something, there's a 32% chance theoretically you're going to go outside of it. And it really only happens 20% of the time. And there's a 4.6% chance you're going to go outside of it a two, two times, but it only happens 2.5%. But there's 0.3% which happens 0.9. So the three times, the outlier moves happen way more than you think, but everything else happens way less. But the most dangerous range for IVR is the middle tier range from 30 to 60. But from 30 to 60 is also where you make the most money. And then over 60, you take the least amount of outlier risk. And, you know, you take the least amount of outlier risk. That's why you've got to step up at that point because you get the biggest rewards for the least amount of risk. I like it. Let's go to the next slide. So IWM, basically the same. The only difference in IWM is that the chances of an outlier move at three times is much greater than theoretical. Almost, you know, in this case, from 0.3 to 1.3, it's over four times greater in the IWM. In the, in the one time expected move and two times expected move, it's just like SPY. Doesn't happen very often, and right. in the and in the um, over sixty, you know, it's it's all good, man. It's clean, and the and the trouble happens right in the middle. Let's go to the next slide. You could spend as much time as you want later on on these things, just sure. looking to see if next slide, John. Yeah, Apple. So when you look at Apple, Apple doesn't have that same outlier risk because it's a big R stock, um, but it breaks the one time expected move more often than you would think. <laughs> which is crazy in Apple to me. So in in the indexes, it's the outlier risk. In the equities, it's not so much the outlier risk in this case. It's it's more of the, the one-time expected move risk, which is kind of weird. It's the, yeah, you know, kind of weird. Yeah, right. Yep, let's go to Tesla. And you know what? Though in equities, you would expect a little bit. I mean, I, I don't I mean, I would never have known what the numbers are, but you would expect that, wouldn't you? Kind of? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So yeah. in Tesla, it's interesting because the the ranges are pretty much in line. The two times expected move is a little outside of that. Um, but in fact, the two times expected move is way outside of that in, in Tesla. Um, but the outlier risk in Tesla is pretty low. And the 
um, uh, you know, I, I, I guess that's really the whole story in Tesla is that is that the there's just there's some risk at two times the expected move. I think that the the takeaway from this is that indexes have three times the expected move risk and, and equities have one and two times expected move risk. That's really the takeaway. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the last slide and see if the research team agrees with those takeaways. Overall, the ETFs moved over one and two times their expected move less often than the pure black shells would suggest. Correct. When they did break one or two times, it was disproportionately when IVR was high, but not extreme, even when the rate was below theoretical levels. When IVRs were above 60, the chance of large moves relative to the expected move dropped for each underlying. Fine. So for low, lower, low IVR Tesla was the only situation considered where two times the expected moves were more common than theory. And moves greater than three times the expected move occurred rarely, but more often than the three tenths of a percent of pure theory. Appropriate position sizing is vital to survive these extreme moves when they eventually happen. A lot of math went into to that piece. It was a really good piece. It was actually quite interesting. I couldn't agree more. Perfect. Good job. Good job by the team. We'll take a quick 90 second break. We'll come back. We got a market that's unchanged, but somebody who's, well, brings a lot of fire to Tasty Live. Your friend and mine, Mr. Scott Sheridan. Next, Tasty Trade World Headquarters, best brokerage firm in the galaxy. Be back in 90 seconds.